Hi, my name is Alex and I'm with Drew. We're from Monroe County Conservation District and we're here today to show you how to build your own circle trap. Um, the spotted lanternfly is an invasive leafhopper that came here from Asia. We are currently a quarantine county um, and the preferred trapping method right now is the circle trap. The circle trap is a funnel style trap where the spotted lanternfly will crawl up into it or fly into it and it won't be able to get back out. Um, we are currently in the month of May so the spotted lanternflies are hatching and they are um, in their first instar. So they're a little black crawling insects that you'll find on the trunks of trees, on your porch, on your foundation, pretty much anywhere. Um, and they are both, the nymph and the adult can be caught by this trap. So <clears throat> what I decided to do is try to put together a circle trap uh, with things that you probably have at your house. Now, this is all stuff that I had at my house. You may not have the same things, but uh, you may be able to improvise and substitute certain things. Uh, you're gonna need some plastic bottles. I use these because they have nice wide openings. You're gonna need um, some wire. I just used some household wire that I had laying around and stripped it out. Some screening or netting. Uh, you, might, you may even be able to use a t-shirt for this. Uh, some twine, you can use bailing twine, shoelaces, this just happens to be paracord, it's what I had. You also need a bag, a gallon size Ziploc bag, a couple pieces of wood, handy dandy duct tape, staple gun, if you don't have a staple gun, you can use thumbtacks, you can use hot glue, uh, maybe even finishing nails, whatever you have at the house to, uh, to fasten this to the wood. So... <clears throat> The way we started out is by connecting these two end to end. And what that's going to do, that's going to actually form the funnel to bring the spotted lantern flies up into the bag. So, pretty simple. You probably don't need as much duct tape as I used, but. I like to use a little extra because that's the way I am. <clears throat> Next up, you're going to take your baggie, put your hand in it, flip it inside out. You'll see why in just a minute. Stick this inside with it inverted. Take your scissors, cut an X from end to end. You know, this isn't rocket science and it really doesn't have to be that precise. And if you have sharp scissors, it probably works a little bit better. These are rather dull, I guess. You could even use a knife if you, uh, if you didn't have scissors handy. Um, I think a potato would probably cut this better than those did. But anyway, you just fold it down a little bit, uh, making sure that the X, the, the flaps that, are, that were made by the X are on the, you can see, you can see that it's on the plastic still. And you take your duct tape, making sure you're getting both the plastic bottle and the flaps. Wrap it around. Again, probably don't need that much, but a little extra doesn't hurt anyway. <clears throat> Make sure it's touching on all four corners, and then you just fold the bag back inside out. <clears throat> zippers are nice you can use the ones that just you know kind of uh, stick together but the zipper is nice it makes it a little bit easier to open it up and empty out the spotted lantern fly when they're uh, when they're in there <clears throat> so up next we need to make the funnel part so we're here and all of these dimensions, all the materials are, are up on our website, or up on our uh, website and possibly even Facebook. So you basically fold it like you're making a paper airplane. Fold that side in. Fold that side in. Arms aren't quite long enough. <clears throat> so you, make, you fold it like you're making a paper airplane. And then what you're going to do is take 
you've got two sticks. One's a little bit longer, one's a little bit shorter. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but I drilled, pre-drilled a couple of holes right here. And that's going to be for the wire in a later step. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is take the shorter stick, insert it here, overlap the mesh just a little bit, take staple gun, put a staple in, and then you're just going to staple it right on down the line. And again, you could use thumbtacks for this, you could use finish nails, um, pretty much anything that you probably have laying around the house that will go into wood will work. Okay, now we need to take the scissors and just kind of cut the end off of the screen. Now what that's going to do is allow us <clears throat> to connect these two pieces together. Now my screen needs, my opening needs to be a little bit bigger. So you just kind of make, again, if you do like a few slits, that works out better than one big cut because then that material, you'll see, will be able to hook on to the edge of your bottles. And I need it to be just a little bit bigger. And if you go too big, it's not a big deal because you're going to be using duct tape. And again, you know, if you can't fix it with duct tape, it's broken and throw it away. So then we just slide that right on in there. Okay. Then we take our duct tape. And again, we want to make sure that we get the screen material and we get the plastic. And you want to make sure there's no gaps where the screen meets the plastic. Because, again, this is a funnel and you don't want the spotted lantern flies to be able to get out. And looks like I need one more piece. Ooh. Good thing I only need one more piece because that's all I've got left. <clears throat> Again, it doesn't have to be pretty because all you're doing is trapping spotted lantern flies and they don't care what it looks like. <clears throat> so now you take the second stick. Again, with the holes that you pre drill, you want to have those towards the bottom opening. And you want to kind of match them up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this isn't rocket science. Flip it over. And now we're going to staple this side down to the screen material. And again, the name of the game here is you're making a funnel to bring the spotted lantern flies up and into the bag. So, <clears throat> take your pieces of wire, insert them into the holes, and again, all these, all the materials and everything is right on our website of what exactly you need. And I kind of break down exactly um, sizes and lengths of things. Uh, but again. You know, what's nice about this is you can adjust it to what you have at the house. You know, if you don't have wire, perhaps you can just use a piece of wood between the two pieces of wood to keep it open. All this does, again, is you'll see when we put it on the tree, is that it keeps the bottom of the trap open to form a funnel. So... That's that. And these can be adjusted out in whatever you need to do. I like to bend them up just a little bit so they don't pop back out the other side. And that's what I, that's is also what's nice about the copper wire. Copper is pretty malleable and uh, easy to form and bend, so you don't have to worry about it, you know, being difficult or having to use any any sort of a tool to do it. 
So, <clears throat> what's next? We need to have a way to fasten it to the tree. So, that's what your two lengths of twine is, are for. <clears throat> now, you have to figure out which end is going to be on the tree, which end is going to be uh, out open. So, generally you're going to want to have the solid end up against the tree, and then the end that you overlapped and stapled to the wood piece, you're going to want to have that on the outside. So, <clears throat> what we do is make a series of slits in the mesh. It helps if you just bend it. You know, you're just going to be making these a couple of inches apart. The key is that you're going to be able to take the piece of twine, run it through them, and then strap it onto the tree. Voila! <clears throat> so then you take your piece of twine. The length of the twine is, is listed on the website. Um, if you have a particularly large tree, you may need to adjust it. If you have a smaller tree, you can adjust it for the smaller tree as well. So you're just going to weave this in, in and out, in and out, in and out. There's, in the end, there's not going to be much tension on this, so I'm not too worried about the screen material further ripping. Uh, and plus, you'll see that we have to anchor it to the tree as well for it to work properly. I like to run it around this piece of wood so that when you're tying it to the tree, it has something pretty solid to hold on to. You want to make sure it's fairly centered so you have enough on each side to get around the tree. And that's that. Then, <clears throat> that'll secure the bottom, but you also need to secure the top. So to secure the top, what I like to do, you're just going to be tying this around the tree onto the plastic cones that were left over from the bottles. Um, <clears throat> so what you can do, I'm just going to peel back a little piece of this, of this duct tape here, if it'll let me. just so you don't have to fight with it when you're trying to hang it. Put it on. Just wrap the duct tape over top of it, and that'll hold it fast when you're tying it around the tree, so you don't have to have three or four arms to, to do it. So that's it. Uh, the way it'll work, it'll get tied around the tree. This will be nice and tight around the tree. It'll climb on up in. Keep on going, keep on going through the little funnel into the bag and you'll be able to see them because the bag is clear. And this will work on pretty much all stages of growth. Uh, they generally do climb a lot uh, and they're called spotted lantern flies but uh, they do a lot of climbing and hopping and not a heck of a lot of flying. So that's it in a nutshell uh, and again uh, there are there's a material list on our website, and our website is www.mcconservation.org. So sticky bands were another recommended trap. Um, since we've been using them for a few years now, we've noticed that wildlife is getting stuck onto these sticky bands, birds, beneficial insects, butterflies. So if you are using sticky bands, it is suggested that you put some sort of wiring or barrier so that a bird isn't going to fly into it and get stuck. The great thing about circle traps is you don't have to worry about that. So these are just as effective and they have a lot less negative consequences. Sure. So. And if you have a really big tree, you may not be able to cover it with just one. So you may need to double up one on one side, one on another side. Or if you have a huge tree, you might have to do three. Uh, or if you have small trees, you may have to change the design a little bit to make that work and be functional for your uh, selected tree. So the host tree of the spotted lanternfly is the Alanthus, 
or the tree of heaven. So if you have tree of heaven on your property, that would be the best tree to put it on. But there's also a lot of different trees that spotted lanternflies like, such as willow, walnut, maple, oak. They're not always picky. And sometimes you might find that you have a lot of egg masses on a pole or a post in your yard. So you could, you could even put this on something like that. Um, if you have an infested tree with a lot of egg masses, that's definitely the tree that you would want to target with a circle trap that's going to be the most effective. But even if you're not necessarily seeing them on your property, but you know you're in an area that has spotted lanternflies, it's always a good idea to just put these up. Um, it does work best on a tree that has smooth bark, and that's kind of a nice straight shape. Um, but you could probably put them on anything with a little bit of finagling if sure. you had to. And if you have a tree that has, you know, uh, deeper uh, grooves in it, what you can do is under where it attaches to, under the screen where it attaches to the tree, you could even stuff that with, with something, you know, whether it be um, cotton balls or, you know, some other type of filler material, just so that they're not um, evading the trap and going under it. Uh, again, it's the, the way this works is just by funneling them in. Once you find the tree that you're gonna use, um, you're just gonna install the circle trap. You can do it at chest height. Even though they do like to be up high, you have to think about emptying it. So if you're putting this, you know, going on a ladder, putting it all the way up here, I can't really reach that. So that's not really a great place to put it. So we're putting it at chest height. It's still high enough that the spotted lanternflies will be attracted to crawling into it. And I can still reach up here and empty the spotted lanternflies out of the bag. If you're putting it on the tree, you want to make sure that the longer piece of wood is right on the tree and the shorter piece is going to be the one that's further away from the trunk of the tree. So you'll just tie the first cord, the upper cord, fasten that to the tree, and then you go with the lower cord, and you're going to fasten this. So here you just want to make sure that this screen is close to the trunk because you don't want to have a large gap here or else the spotted lanternfly can, can fly through here, come out the other side, it's not actually getting into this baggie up here. So the whole point of this, remember, is to create a funnel. So you can check both sides. We will fasten that down um, to make it a little bit more secure and flush in a minute. Now this is on the tree. And then the next thing you can do with a staple gun or thumbtacks or whatever you have on hand is you're going to flatten out the screen so like I said it's flush against the bark and you know with those slits that you created you can kind of adjust this which is the nice part and then from here you're going to use the staple gun or whatever you have and fasten this to the tree There you go. So now the spotted lanternfly circle trap is installed in our tree. The nymphs and the adults will fly up in here and I have it at a nice height so that I can open this up and empty them out so that it's ready to go once it starts getting full. And this trap is going to stay here at Kettle Creek Environmental Center on the trail. So if you wanna come out and see for yourself, um, our demonstration, you can come look at it.